Nail with Cupid, sure shot, cause you were the finest one like Sailor Jupiter. Hot like stove top, sexy in the clothes you rock, stacked like pancakes from top to your socks. What's up my wizards dev from SVMTG down there channel on the YouTube Zoody Decks. Something that people have actually been asking me for, like kind of a lot. <laughs> I haven't actually built a deck around this card. It's Grace Blade Artisan. We're gonna do it for a whole five dollars. Apparently I'm a lot more hype when I make a video during the day. Hey Igby, what's going on? Well, like I said, this deck is about five dollars on TCG Player. I think my cart rung up like 535, something like that. And no card in the deck is gonna cost you more than 25 or 30 cents. That's the most expensive piece. Pretty refreshing because I've been covering a lot of competitive decks lately. Oh, um, by the way, they're working on my apartment right now, so if you hear, like, loud Spanish in the background, I swear to you that I'm not holding Honduran immigrants hostage in the basement. Yeah, that'll throw them off the trail. Let's talk about the creatures in the deck. That's important when discussing magic decks, and we're only playing eight creatures in the deck. I'm sorry about that. There's just not really that many creatures in the colors that I want to play that interact well with auras or enchantments, so we gotta take what we can get. First of all, we gotta play four Grace Blade Artists in the deck. I mean, it's the, the deck is based around this card. Let's play as many copies as we can, so we'll see it all the time. Whether you call it Mega Man, some people call it Mega Man. Um, and then some people call it Mario, too, because it like puts on suits and gets better. That's hilarious. But whatever you call it, it's not like the best build around in the format, but it is a really fun one. We can do it for super cheap, and it's kind of a good deck to pull out, you know, whenever you get a little bored <laughs> with the standard deck that you're playing. You're like, hey, you try to beat this, and actually, the card can do some pretty cool things, man. You can be swinging for a lot of damage by turn four, depending on what you put on it. So we're going to try this out, and in testing, it has been the worst thing against certain decks, you know. Um, against, like, Mono White, for instance. If Mono White doesn't get their Declaration or their Silk Wrap or whatever removal they happen to be playing, this could actually race Mono White, like, pretty well, depending on what R's you slap onto it. So, good against a couple of aggro decks in the format, but you're going to have to watch out against a lot of things because you really don't want to get, like, three for one because your Artisan died. Luckily, we're playing some protection in the deck against that. I'll get to that in a moment. But before I get to that, I should also say that we're playing a 4 of Blessed Spirits in the deck. And it sucks that this is a 3-drop, and Grace Blade also is. I wish this was, you know, a 2-drop would be amazing. Like, a 2-drop 1-1 one, one flyer that did this would be amazing. I just want to be somewhere else on the curve other than 3, because we got a lot of good 3-mana cost enchantments. Grace Blade herself is a freaking 3-mana card, so I hate that this is 3-mana. But, you know, if, if you wanted to play other creatures, though, I would definitely... I could see playing green in the deck all day, because you get Herald of the Pantheon that way. Herald of the Pantheon can attack in a pinch, gain you some life to keep you up against aggro if that's what you want to do, you know? And, more importantly, lets you play auras for much cheaper, you know? You can play, like, two three-mana auras on turn four if you have a Herald of the Pantheon, so that's... That would be good. I just didn't want the deck to be three colors. I felt like that would ruin the budget, all of that, so... I'm just stuck with these two creatures here, but bless spirits... For, even though I just gave it a bunch of crap for costing three mana, is still pretty good. You know, whenever you put an aura on your Grace Blade Artisan, it gets a plus one, plus one counter. Or you can just put auras on it if it's, if it's all you've got out, you know. And then your kids can get a plus one, plus one counter than whatever the aura gives to them, too. So that's, you know, all of that is pretty good, right? I just, Blessed Spirit's probably the only other thing that we get, and we, we take what we can get. But what is this deck without its R's, right? And this is what all the work went into, is figuring out the right distribution of R's. I've changed up a lot of different stuff a lot of different times and come to a few different conclusions as far as the R's in the deck. But one thing that's never changed is I've always played a 4 of Griff's Boon in the deck. Griff's Boon is awesome, man. On a Grace Blade, it's basically plus 3, plus 1, and flying, which you get 5 power flyer on turn 4. And since it only costs 1, you can afford to play a, another 3 mana Aura on your Grace Blade and this on turn four. That's really, really good, actually. It can lead to these enormous swings. So, being able to stretch out your mana with a card like this is really, really nice. The real attraction here is the fact that our opponents are going to try and two or three for one us occasionally, you know, just by removing one guy. We lose him and the R is attached to him. It sucks. It's the worst thing about a deck like this. And with Gris Boom, we can mitigate that a little bit, you know. It can come back later in the game. So, love that about it, too. Just everything about Gris Boom is good. Decent buff. Flying is nice. You know, it only costs the one mana. It comes back. Perfect aura, and maybe one of the best ones in the format. Not probably the best aura. We're playing a few two-mana auras. I feel like that's important, too, especially if we miss a land drop. Turn four, you know, we can put a Griff's Boon and a two mana R on a guy. And these are actually super important. Um, we're playing four copies of Angelic Gift in the deck. And yeah, I know Griff's Boon gives flying, but I want as many ways to give flying as I possibly can because it's one of the more relevant things that you can do 
with a Grace Blade Artisan. So love, love, love this card. The fact that it draws you a card is the actual draw here. That's uh, no pun intended. Really, no pun intended. But, you know, the real feature is that it draws you the card. And it'll give a Grace Blade Artisan, you know, suddenly he's a 4-4 flyer out of nowhere. So, and you have more mana to spend because two mana is all this costs. It's not bad at all. Really, really efficient. And again, flying is one of the best abilities you can give to a Grace Blade. So, I want as many ways of doing that as possible. I don't mind playing eight ways. We're also playing two Murder Investigation in the deck, which looks sketchy. But again, they're going to try and kill our Grace Blade. They, they, that is priority number one for them, is like two or three or four for wanting us. So if we can stick a murder investigation on the thing, then that really helps us out like you would not believe. And then we get to like spread out our auras a little bit later in the game. You know, we lose a Grace Blade, we get four tokens or whatever. Then we can spread out our auras. Not bad. So actually, murder investigation has been really well, uh, really good. At first, it was Grasp of the Hieromancer. I actually did like this card too come to think of it. Um, I just, I felt like Murder Investigation was the insurance that we needed. Trust me, this deck needs insurance. <laughs> Murder Investigation is pretty good as far as that goes. It's worked out pretty well as long as you can stick it. What will sometimes happen is you go to Murder Investigation on a Grace Blade Artisan and that's when, in response, they kill Artisan. That sucks. <laughs> that really, really sucks. But again, we're running some protection, so we don't have to worry about it as much, but do be wary. But our three mana auras are like really where it's at in this deck. These are great auras, and one of them especially may be the other best aura in the format. I talked about Gris Boon earlier being the best, and from a practical standpoint it probably is, but as far as just big, splashy, bomby, win the game auras, I like Invocation of St. Traps, and I'm going to play the whole playset here to make sure that we see it. This is great on turn four with the Grace Blade Artisan. You know, you're suddenly swinging eight, split amongst two guys, one of them flies out of nowhere. And on turn four, if you can put a Griff's Boon and an Invocation on a Grace Blade, you're doing crazy amounts of damage split amongst two creatures, both of which fly. So just like, that has happened more than once, by the way, because we're playing four of of all of those cards. Happens kind of a lot. So if they can't answer that, they're taking a ton. Eleven damage to be exact. Nothing to sneeze at on turn four, especially considering both creatures fly. This is another way, again, you can just race aggro decks, you know? If they, they can deal some damage to you fine, but they're going to have to figure out what they're going to do about the giant thing that makes a giant flyer whenever it swings. The other three mana aura we're playing is Battle Mastery. I'm going to play a full four of, of this. At first it was just a two of, but I really, really like Mastery, especially late game, you know? Once their resources have dwindled a little bit and you know that you're going to stick the next aura you play, this can be game ending, man. Like, there will be times where you have a Grace Blade Artist and, say an Invocation of Saint Trap and a Griff's Boon on it. I've already talked about that. Um, and then later on in the game you play a Battle Mastery and suddenly you're swinging for all the damage, like literally more than their life total because Battle Mastery is crazy. Even if you have nothing else on Grace Blade, she's naked other than this, you're dealing eight damage in combat with a Battle Mastery. So I have really, really been a fan of this and I didn't think I was going to be at first. Battle Mastery sort of has a bad rap for whatever reason, um, but in this deck specifically, the card is bonkers. Hey, you know, I really am more hype during the day. I should do this more often. I'm just happy today I got off work early, and I was like, yay, quick video, so here I am. But anyway, that was random. I'm just, I like telling stories. But anyway, let's finish off the enchantments here, the R's at least. Um, we're playing two copies of Iona's Blessing in the deck. Iona's Blessing is girl. Oh. Hello. 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 Hi. Um, beautiful wife and sweet mother-in-law came home, so I came upstairs because I'm a gentleman and I want them to have a living room. I wasn't kicked out or anything. Anyway, let's finish off the R's here. We're playing two copies of Iona's Blessing in the deck. Blessing? Super awesome at the four drop slot. I don't want to play any other four drop R's or anything. I just feel like the curve is nice though. You know, the third turn artisan, fourth turn this. Suddenly you've got a 6-6 six, six Vigilance. It does other stuff. <laughs> that's, that's pretty good, but I don't want to go overboard or anything. I don't want to have multiple copies of this in my hand, although multiple copies on it aren't terrible. Don't get me wrong. I mean, each one is plus four plus four, basically. But I don't really think that they're as vital as some of the other R's in the deck, and they're pretty heftily priced. So let's just keep it at two, and when we find one, they're pretty good. Let's stop off before we go to the protection spells um, onto this thing. I don't really have a category for this. It's just like, it's open the armory. We're playing two copies of that because it helps us go search for R's. And that's good. I mean, it allows us to play less copies of certain auras. You know, I, I like that about it. Um, and we are still playing four ofs of the very important auras, yes. But, you know, th this, no matter what, allows us to go search up an aura. Even if it's one we already have 
on an artisan. We don't care. We'll just go put another one on. Who cares? Last thing I'll talk about main deck is these protection spells that I keep bringing up. Incredibly important if we're going to be successful ever in this deck. There's so much good removal going around and we can't get like two or three for one because they remove our Grace Blade Artisan. So we got to have a couple of ways of protecting it and we have a couple of ways in the format that actually do different things besides just protect it, you know? So with that in mind, we're going to play four copies of Center Soul and three copies of Negate. That's right, seven whole protection pieces, but they do more than just protect Grace Blade. The important one to really point out here is Negate. Negate is just amazing whether you're countering removal on your Grace Blade and mass removal sometimes as well, or you're countering things like Planeswalkers or Collected Company, Pyromancer's Goggles. There's so many good um, targets for a Negate in this format that it's more than just protecting your Artisan, you know? There's a lot of stuff you can do with Negate. Center Soul is a 4 of because it's so awesome in the deck. It's a 1-2 punch. It does two important things for us, both providing protection for our Grace Blade Artisan and then rebounding to make it unblockable against certain boards, you know? So sometimes we can not only protect our guy, but get through a huge swing with Grace Blade Artisans. So card is fan-freaking-tastic in this deck specifically. Here's the lands right here. We're playing 23 of them, and there's not much too special except Rogue's Passage. I do want to play a couple, at least one, but I'm playing two copies of Rogue's Passage in the deck. We see a lot of, you know, decks that rely on board state. We've got a lot of tokens in the format, things like that. So I like to have a land in the mana base or a card somewhere that allows it to go, a uh, Grace Blade Artisan, to go unblocked. And yes, Center Soul can do that, but it doesn't work against everything, you know, if they have a specifically red and a specifically black creature, let's just say on the battlefield, they'll still be able to block, you know. If they have Eldrazi Scion tokens, they'll still be able to block. Or Eldrazi of any kind, they're, they're colorless. Can't do anything about that with Center Soul. So we can still get through with Rogue's Passage against big board states and such, and certain creatures, and that's important. Here's our sideboard here. Lots of important stuff here, you know. Not only do we have even more protection in the form of Dispel and Negate, but remember that, you know, Dispel can counter things like Collected Company and other instants in the format, you know, not just specifically spot removal. And Negate, good to fill out a playset because against certain decks we'll want to counter Planeswalkers, we'll want to counter some artifacts, you know, Pyromancer's Goggles mostly, Collected Company, there's that card again. Just a million different things that we can target with Negate, and I've boarded it in a lot. More murder investigation against especially removal heavy decks. The card is fine if you just if you know if you don't play into removal when you're playing the card, then it's a good card. Just you have to be crafty about it. Um, and then I guess the last thing I'll talk about is displacement wave. Um, actually, I will I will touch on this real quick. Pacifism and Stasis Snare. These are removal in this deck because they remove creatures and give blessed spirits plus one plus one counters. So that's that's decent synergy there. Um, and we got to play some removal in the board. And then displacement wave great against the tokens decks in the format. That's really all I have to say about that. Here are your power rankings here. Final score of 46. That's a pretty low score. And there's not really a whole lot of ways to upgrade the deck. Probably a couple things, you know, but this is not necessarily the kind of deck that's meant for upgrading, you know. It's a kind of deck that's meant to exist as sort of a casual thing in standard, play it against your buddies, use it to, take, to play test against, you know. It's a good sort of, is this deck good at all? Let me play test it against this stupid thing. Um, <laughs> so, you know, it can be played against pretty easily, but it's a fun deck, you know, it's five bucks. So try the deck out, super, super low to, uh, to order on TCG Player, and just have some fun with it. That's all I got for now as far as this deck goes. Remember to check out the top 10 um, commons in SOI Standard. Just did that video today too. And we'll have the top 10 uncommons coming soon as well. And I've got a bunch of deck techs coming up. You all know Crawling Sensation, um, a black deck of some kind. I'm not really sure. I was going to build um, Big Black, like Big Red, you know, and worthy of jokes. But um, I've decided that Big Black is an awful lot like this deck, the $50 Mono Black Control deck. It's no longer $50 because Kalidus is ridiculous, uh, but that, that deck looks an awful lot like this deck, so I might do Mono Black Sacrifice or something else, I haven't decided. I'm doing another Clue deck here, so I'm just a ton of things coming up, so sub if you're new, and then like the content if you enjoy it. You can also share if you want to, and then talk to me as well, I'll just do the YouTube stuff. I had somebody ask me through email, which is like a pretty personal way of asking this, is Ziggy dead? Ziggy's here, Mwah. he's giving me kisses and everything, so Ziggy's here, he's still sweet, and uh, I just wanted to let you guys know that Ziggy's cool, and I'll see you guys later, I'm Dev from SBMTG, thanks for watching my wizards. Anyway, I just really don't see too many creatures in the format in the colors that I want to play, that 